I've never played a Star Ocean game in my life. And when Square Enix announced Star Ocean Second Story R Remake, I got excited because this is a really great time for me to finally sink my teeth or, or get my hands onto a classic Star Ocean game that I actually missed back in the late 90s. And if you know me, I love my late 90s turn-based JRPGs or, or JRPGs in general, and I do love my PlayStation 1. So a massive thank you to Square Enix for providing me with a code for review for the game. So essentially kind of a sponsored video today. Really appreciate that, and I'm very lucky and very grateful to have some sort of partnership with Square. I'm a lifelong fan of Square Enix. With that being said, my thoughts in this video are my own. I want to kind of keep it casual and not super comprehensive. So if you're looking for an easy to listen to video with some general thoughts, this is the one for you. So Star Ocean Second Story R begins with one of two characters you can choose from. You can choose Claude C. Kenny, a Federation officer, or Reyna, a strange girl with strange powers on the planet of Expel. Now, I chose Claude because I thought Claude's story and Claude's appearance looked a little bit more appealing to me. The cool thing is, is that you can play the game from either of those two perspectives. However, the story is pretty much the same. You do have some moments where different characters go off and do their own things, and that's what the benefit is of choosing two different characters, meaning you need to do a couple different playthroughs to get the full picture of this game. So yeah, I chose Claude because I thought the idea of a Federation officer in space seemed Pretty cool, and Star Ocean, from an outside perspective, again, having never played a Star Ocean game before, always had this sci-fi element to it that, you know, Final Fantasy didn't necessarily have, which is what's always, you know, kind of been appealing about this series to me. So in summary, and not to spoil Star Ocean's second story R at all, but you play as either Claude or Reyna, you're on this different planet, and then you try and find your way back home. There's this thing called the Sorcery Globe, which is causing everything to go to heck, essentially, because, you know, I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to say anything a little bit more harsh than that for YouTube. But, uh, you know, there are reasons for the chaos in the world, and it's up to you to figure it out. You know, th there's some pretty good twists in this game, and every game is going to have its twist. So I'm not spoiling anything by saying that. But for most of the game, I feel that it played it safe. There wasn't a, a massive aha moment. Uh, I, I found, you know, even in later stages of the story right towards the end of the game i was like okay yep uh-huh there's nothing really like mind-blowing here but overall i really enjoyed the story i thought it was great i thought it was cool and again there are 99 different endings because when i beat the game it said congrats for beating star ocean there are 99 endings i'm like oh my god am i ever gonna play that probably not so i finished claude and i'm playing through arena right now to get the differences in story but overall i thought it was a great and enjoyable ride in terms of story now this game is not turn-based, so if you're coming into Star Ocean completely blind and expecting a turn-based game, it's not. It's more action-oriented, so you start your battles, you can either run into enemies on the field or enemies will run into you. You basically just smash the A button to win. It, it is like that a little bit, and you can up the difficulty to either Earth or Universe or, or whatever to essentially have a harder time, but I played it on the easier setting, and even some battles on the easy setting were actually pretty challenging, so it's not necessarily a free ride to the credits. You, you do have to work for it. Now, in battles, you have four characters that you can choose from. You play as Claude or Reyna as your main character. And, and think of everybody else as support characters. You don't control them like with the control stick, but you can use a D-pad or, or different buttons to use their spells while you're playing as Claude or Reyna. So you might find that you're actually scrolling through the menu quite a lot. That being said, you can also use items which are on a timer. And of course, if you're going to be like me, you're going to be using lots of <laughs> resurrection elixirs or, or magic elixirs to, to bring your characters back to life. So you constantly be looking for that timer to come back. Not only that, you do have the D-pad, which allows for different assist characters, essentially what it's, it's what I'm calling them, which some of our legacy characters, so you can find them throughout the story or, or by doing different challenges, which are, are really great and come in handy in battle, believe me, a, a lot. Or the characters that you don't currently have in your party, you can set as assist characters so if one character, for example, Leon is really good as a mage, you can set him to up on the D-pad and use one of his more powerful attacks or more powerful spells in battle, or you can set another character to heal as an, as an additional heal outside of Reyna. It's actually pretty handy and pretty intuitive. So you do have to get used to being very busy during the battles, especially if they're very hard or, or a lot more difficult. But I found overall, especially playing on the Earth difficulty, which is the easiest difficulty, there was still a mild level of challenge. Now, if you do find that the bosses or battles in general are too hard, you do have the option to upgrade your characters because just simply leveling up is not enough. 
With each battle, you get battle points or different skill points, which you can use to improve your specialty skills, combat skills, or special arts. So of course you can get different special commands that you can use in battles, or you can just level up your stats as you go. Like I said, leveling is not enough, so you do need to be pretty proactive in actually going through manually and selecting different skills or different traits for your characters. And it's also pretty good to actually not level your characters the same way, so that way you have a little bit more balance. So, you know, for example, Claude for me was a, my main attacker and I wanted him to be pretty beefed up, but I didn't want Reyna to be beefed up in the way that Claude was. So I leveled her differently and, you know, so on and so forth. So you do need to find a good balance with your team and, and not have everybody really flatline with stats. Although, you know, towards the end of the game, if you grind it enough, everybody pretty much will be even leveled. I didn't finish the game with a full party, and this is something that I didn't realize. And I suppose if you're going to play Star Ocean Second Story R, you know, you can do so blind. The game is fairly easy enough. You don't really need a guide. But if you do want a more comprehensive playthrough and you want to try and gather as many characters and gather as many items as possible, I'd suggest referencing a guide because some characters you do get naturally as you progress through the story. You can either have them join you or decline them joining and you can play it, I suppose, you know, almost solo really with Claude or Reyna or both and not have any other characters join you. But that being said, you do have to go out of your way and look for different characters. So it does pay to use something called private action. When you go to different towns, you can press a specific button, your party splits up and you play as one character and you can interact with other characters and that's how you join or you, you, know, you trigger specific sequences or, or paper trails or whatever you want to call them and then follow characters to specific dungeons and you know, chase them up that way. So you do actually have to work a little bit to recruit certain characters and again you can only have a max party of eight meaning you can only collect six more characters throughout your story so choose wisely oh hey by the way if you're enjoying this video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already if you haven't noticed i'm a smaller youtuber so i could use all the algorithmic help that i can now you guys know i love my jrpg music or video game music in general and i gotta say music in star ocean second story r was absolutely stand out I was listening to some stuff in headphones while I played, and I just thought it was really bang on. The mixes were just awesome. There's a lot of clarity with all the instruments. I thought everything was just absolutely stand out. I loved the balance between the drums and, and, and the bass and the organs and stuff, the harder rock and tracks that sound a lot like classic rock, which is what I grew up with. It's really cool, and I'd highly suggest if you can play this game with headphones or a good Bluetooth speaker, it's really well worth doing so. So huge props to the sound team for doing a really great job, not only on the soundtrack, but just the sound effects and everything. Great sound design stuff. In terms of graphics, man, I thought this was great. And a game like this is what I remember these PlayStation 1 JRPGs to look like, you know, I've covered a lot of stuff on my channel like Grandia or Xenogears, like this, what you're seeing here with Star Ocean Second Story R, th that's what I remember those games looking like. And speaking of Xenogears Square, if you're watching this video, please remake Xenogears with this same coat of paint. I mean, this is beautiful. I do like the HD 2D stuff that, you know, Square has done with Triangle Strategy or Octopath Traveler or the Live Alive remake. That's great, but this is cool because all those games were, well, not the newer games like Octopath Traveler, but you know those older remakes were remakes of Super Nintendo games, whereas this is a PlayStation 1. So you do have those 2D sprites in the 3D world, and I thought this was a perfect realization of that classic PlayStation 1 vibe. I thought it was really great and a really beautiful game. A lot of the graphical elements just are really visually pleasing. And not only that, the, the updated character art as well and menus, it's just beautiful, really great package visually and in and, and the sound department as well like i said this is a really great game and i really enjoyed my time playing through what was you know about 18 hours or so just for claude's story and i'm really excited to dive in more for reina's story there's so much stuff to do you know you have your side missions you can do guild missions you can do fishing which i think was a new feature for the remake there's just an entire world pun intended i guess of things to do and people to see and places to go I just really enjoyed immersing myself in the world, even for the you know under 20 hours that I spent with Claude's story. And I'm actually quite excited to go back and, and find out more and recruit different characters and kind of, you know, it's the same story again. Every experience is gonna be unique for, for every player because again, you have 99 or so different endings or, or 100 different endings to pretty much find out or finish or, or whatever. I mean, you get what I'm going for, but I would honestly say that Star Ocean Second Story R, I, I think is my JRPG of the year. And 
know, the, the title I don't think is necessarily clickbait for this video, but I, I really enjoyed my time with this and I, I really loved the demo when I played it a few months ago and I was really excited to get my hands on the game and thanks again to Square for that. But uh, this was a really great experience. And I found myself having a little bit of JRPG burnout because I'd played a lot of games leading up to this. So I, I took a couple of months off from playing anything turn-based or, or anything JRPG. But this really kind of got me going for, for, for wanting more from this game. So as soon as I saved the game and went to bed, I couldn't wait to, to play again. So there you go, a slightly kind of rambly, but uh, casual review of Star Ocean Second Story at Har. Not super comprehensive. Again, so if you're, if you're coming to this, as a, you know, a die-hard Star Ocean fan, probably not the review for you. I mean, thank you if you've, if you've made it this far, but uh, I really enjoyed my time with this game. And again, it's something that you can finish in under 20 hours if you're concerned with time and you just want to get the story from point A to point B, have it be done, and then move on to the next game, which fair enough, some people do that. I do that too. But this is a really great experience and I'd say it's well worth the investment if you do buy the game. I just enjoyed every single moment of it, so I'd highly recommend you go check it out. I'm pretty much only scratching the surface for today's video, but I just wanted to give you a brief first-time Star Ocean fan overview or review of the game. I thought it was great. If you enjoyed this video, I'd highly recommend it if you can. Hey, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on Star Ocean Second Story R. Have you played it before? Did you play the PlayStation 1 game? Did you play the PSP version? Or, you know, are you looking forward to this game as well? I mean, I really was. I really enjoyed it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much again for being here. I appreciate you guys sticking around until the very end. See you again on the next one. Bye-bye.